do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! What's up, everybody? My name is Ethan. This is Courtside TV. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get into it. So, um, the Cleveland Cavaliers are in on this massive James Harden, Karis LeVert, uh, Victor Oladipo, a million draft picks exchange extravaganza, um, and they have completely... Uh, come out a huge winner in this trade, I think. Um, just because they kind of saw this opportunity, saw this situation developing with the whole Harden thing, and, and just kind of swooped in on this trade and managed to come out a massive winner, I think, in my opinion, right? Um, I, like, I mean, they just, I mean, seriously, they just made out like a bandit here with this trade. So there's not as many moving parts here uh, for for the Cavs as there are for some of these other teams, obviously, but I definitely think it's worth talking about the impact that this has for them. It'll probably be a little bit of a shorter video compared to the other ones just because, I mean, there's less players, not as much to say about it, uh, but I really do like this trade for Cleveland. All right, so really quickly before we get started, I do want to point you guys to my videos from a couple of days ago where I did breakdowns on the Brooklyn Nets side of this deal as well as the Houston Rockets. Those are the two headliners. You should see those up on the channel already. Um, and then today we're doing the Cavaliers. Tomorrow you will see the Indiana Pacers side of this trade. So um, be sure to stick around for that one, what that means for the Pacers. Today we're on the Cavs and you can see the, the Rockets and the Nets side of this from a couple of days ago. But uh, with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. So here we go. Um, the just for the Cavaliers here, they traded away Dante Exum, um, a 2022 first round pick, which is the Milwaukee Bucks pick. It's not their own pick, um, and a 2024 second round pick in exchange for Jarrett Allen and Torian Prince, um, and I believe that is the full deal for them. Um, so, what does this mean for for Cleveland, um, for their future, and uh, for their payroll, right? They bring in a young center who I think is really, really good. He's proven at this point that he is a very quality NBA center right now. He's only getting better. He's 22 years old, which is, you know, it's it's crazy to think about that. It seems like he's been in the league for a little bit longer, but he's only 22, um, and he's going to be around for a long, long time. And I believe he is going to be restricted free agent. Actually, let's just check this. Let's just check this live just so I'm sure on my stats. We're going to go basketball reference down to the bottom. And he is, yes, I'm correct, expiring uh, this season, and he will be a restricted free agent this year. So I'm assuming that the Cavs are going to keep him. Um, it's it, it only makes sense, right? You, you If you trade for a guy in the last year of his rookie contract, I'm assuming that you're going to want to work out an extension. I'm sure Allen himself will be motivated to work out an extension with the Cavaliers because they've proven that they want him around at this point. Um, it was a question about how much he's going to get on this extension, and I guess we'll have to see what Cleveland works out with him. Um, but that was part of the reason why I think the Nets were you know, willing to include him. Obviously, you're getting James Harden. You have to give up a guy like Jarrett Allen, but there was a question of how much they were going to be willing to pay Jarrett uh, just because... Uh, of the presence of DeAndre Jordan on the roster, and the rest of the roster is was you know very expensive with the other guys that they have, and then I think the reason why the Rockets decided to reroute him here um, was because they didn't want to pay him either. We know that Tillman Fertitta has been sort of penny pinching since he's become the owner of the Rockets, um, and he's been trying to cut the payroll down, and so that's really the only explanation for me why they didn't just keep him, um, you know, instead of you know, whatever else they got. I think it would have made sense for them to keep Jared Allen with them. Um, but they decided to trade him because they don't, you know, they didn't want to ex extend him, presumably. A uh, similar deal with Torian Prince, who also goes to the Cavs in this trade. He is on the hook for a contract for next year. He's about 15 million um, for this season and next year. So, you know, the Rockets cut bait with that, didn't want him. Instead, get Dante Exum, who at this point, Dante Exum is more of a bad contract guy than an up and coming young player. It's just, I think he's been given enough time. Unfortunately, he's just been hurt too much um, and has not been very good so far in his NBA career. He's coming off the books for about $10 million. Uh, he wasn't really a big part of the Cavs future. I don't imagine he'll be a big part of the Rockets future either. I think it was just more to, uh, you know, let the Rockets get that expiring contract, get his money off the books. Um, and then for, for Cleveland here, they don't really care about paying Torian Prince because he is an okay player, um, but, but the Cavs are not 
really paying anybody else. Andre Drummond's coming off the books after this year. Kevin Love is really the only other guy that they're giving big money to. So they can they can afford to pay Torian Prince and probably won't bring him back when he becomes a free agent. Um, and, you know, he could even be thrown into a trade at some point uh, this offseason or next year because that's right in the, you know, the money range for, um, you know, to, to be very tradable while not being too crippling um so yeah that, that like 15 million dollar range torian prince i think is a trade candidate um for them and then as far as the basketball thing um it becomes pretty awkward this year we've seen people point this out on twitter where it's like oh now the the nets or sorry the Cavs have jared allen and andre drummond and kevin love you know three guys who naturally play a lot of center um and they're gonna want to all be starting so uh what does this do for the rest of the Cavs roster will be interesting to see right because um, Andre Drummond's expiring. He's pretty hard to trade at that $28 million a year. He's not worth that, you know, he's not worth that money. Nobody's going to want to pay that much for Andre Drummond. Um, and, and we'll have to see how much he will get paid on the open market as a free agent. I think it's pretty hard for the Cavs to trade him at this point. It's a lot more likely, in my opinion, that they just roll, you know, run out the season with, with all these guys on the roster, just figure out the lineup on the fly, and then just let Drummond walk in free agency at that point, handing over the full-time center range to Jared Allen. Um, but I guess we'll have to see what they decide to do with that, right? So I don't necessarily think this makes a Drummond trade that much more likely um, just because he's still a hard contract to move. Um, similarly with Kevin Love, he's also still a hard contract to trade at this point. Um, and he's still going to start, you know, he's been starting at the four when he's been healthy. Um, but I think he's hurt again right now. So We'll just have to see what that what happens with Kevin Love, but they might just have to write out his contract too at this point because it's it's looking harder and harder to trade him with every you know every new injury that he picks up. Um, so this move, I don't necessarily think it means that it's more likely that we'll see trades for either of those two guys. Um, it could happen still. I still think it's hard to move those players, um, and it's it's more. I feel like this is more for the future rather than this year. You know, they might just ride this out um, and see, you know, what they can do this off season uh, with the, with their center rotations because, you know, Drummond's coming off the books. Javion McGee is also coming off the books. I didn't mention him. Um, he's a likely buyout guy. I made a video on buyouts a couple weeks ago. That might happen still, or you can flip him somewhere maybe. Um, so I don't know. I don't think it changes their rotations a ton and it doesn't really change their trade plans that much either it probably changes their offseason plans though but yeah you just add him to this young core um add jared allen into this young core here and and you're in business right because you've got him he's probably not like an all-star up-and-coming guy i wouldn't put jared allen in the like he's gonna make the all-star team in three seasons group um but he's still a very very good young guy um and and when you put him next to darius garland and colin sexton who have you know shown some flashes early on as well as i Isaac Okoro has been pretty good so far as well in his rookie season. Um, you, you've got a pretty nice young core there, and they're all like 22 and younger. Um, and so, you know, once you eventually get off that Kevin Love money, um, hopefully they don't make a mistake and bring back Andre Drummond this offseason. Um, you, you, things are, you know, looking up pretty quickly in Cleveland. And you didn't have to give up much to do this. So I really think this is a home run trade, just jumping on an opportunity, um, just, you know, just looking out there for, for any way to improve the team. And I think it kind of got lost in the shuffle because I feel like they probably should have given up more than they did. Uh, but with, with the Rockets and the Nets being so motivated to get this done today, um, you know, get this done like quickly, 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 that the Cavs probably, at least this is how I imagine it to go down, they kind of like you know, snuck in the back and were like, hey, we'll offer you this for Jared Allen. And the teams were like, okay, sure, sure, sure. And like, while they were trying to figure things out, didn't really realize what they were doing, um, kind of giving him up for not very much here. So really just an all time um, solid move by, by the Cavaliers and their GM, figuring out a way to pull this off when it seemed like, you know, they were just gonna be quiet, but, but they really just, you know, came out of nowhere and pull off, I think a really amazing trade. So yeah, that's about all I have for you on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like I said at the top of the video, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, leave a like, ring the bell if you want to. Leave a comment letting me know what you guys think about the Cleveland Cavaliers um, and their role in this big four-team swap. Um, and I, yeah, I'd love to know what you think about this, any of the other trades, you know, parts of this trade that have gone down. Um, you can go check out the videos from a couple of days ago and come back tomorrow for the one on the Pacers. Uh, but yeah, with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one.